welcome to this segment of AKT Celebrity Reads. I'm your host, Alexis K. Tyler, and we're going to be doing another celebrity read on Nipsey Hussle, and we're going to be, hello everybody, going to be dealing with some of his um, friends in common and associates. Now, I'm not finished with this reading, but I still wanted to come on and kind of go over it some. Uh, Let me tell you first, give my disclaimer, my name is Alexis K. Tyler. I am a psychic medium. I speak to those who are physically dead, yet still alive. I bring messages from them from the other side. Onto this side. Thank you, Alma. Thank you for the hearts. I love the hearts. And uh, these are all alleged. These are for entertainment purposes only. These readings are for entertainment purposes only. I don't know the people I'm speaking about personally. Never met them. This is what I am giving to you. In the spirit, I also want to say, if it's someone that you see in here uh, making jokes or laughing or uh, trying to say something nasty to me or provoke me in some type of way, please let me know so we can dismiss them. I need to get moderators for my room uh, to watch watch the room because I don't have time for uh, the bullshit. So that's that's why, too, I want to come on and, and address a couple things. And I want to say thank you for showing me, uh, sending me the news articles about the Boeing, the jumbo Boeing jets, the commercial jets belonging to the U.S. commercial airliners, like I told you, that I saw. And Nipsey, thank you, Ken, Nipsey told me that they were going to crash. New crashes, he started telling me in 2019, 2020, and 2021 when I did the reading for the new year during Christmas week, the last week of the new year for December 2020, moving into 2021, when I did the reading about the Tennessee bombing, when Sarah brought me the information, I saw a big plane crash, uh, a jumbo, United States commercial airliner, even if it was in another country, I still saw it belonging to the U.S., and I saw it again last week. I think I did the lit reading, the reading before we did the singing and the love energy, the healing energy to Nipsey. I mentioned it again. I saw the Boeing 700 series, and I said, watch the Boeings. Any airline that has the Boeings with the three-digit series, 737, 757, 707, 700 series. I got an email. Not only did one have to make an emergency landing Saturday, which was February 2021. I said it was a problem with the engine. I said inside the engine, a glitch in the engine along with the chip that gives the airplane orders and signals. I didn't get a blueprint for the Boeing to tell you where it is, but I've been so busy anyway because it's in the computer system as, as well that gives the commands as well as a faulty uh, system with the engine, and there are splits and divisions with the Boeing Corporation, the Boeing Company. So now if this is employees as well as stockholders or their board, there's a split with the decisions and the way they do things and the way they don't do things, and somebody wants to save money, somebody wants to cut corners, someone in that company wants to shut it down, somebody wants to walk away and close a, a certain division or get rid of a person that's over a division that deals with the Boeings. So, um, as well as this, it blows my mind because I was just telling you the other things Nipsey was telling me about those Boeings and how uh, Con Air, the prison system, uses that Boeing. And it was started by a private family who then merged with uh, the government to transport the prisoners on the Con Air system as well as do other things we don't know about, illegal, very treacherous, nefarious things with the Boeing. And then right after I say that, it's three of them. 
And initially I was told about one Boeing 777, which is in the 700 series. I saw the number seven in the three digits, the 700 Boeing Jumbo Jets belonging to the U.S. And then someone sent me an email today. They said, Alexis, there were three Boeings that had to emergency land, almost crashed with the engines falling out, breaking up. Hey, Lizette. Thank you. I love you, too. And I, I wanted to come on now, but if you look at it, you'll see I'm not lying. You know, like all these people try to say that I'm a liar, I'm crazy. Oh, we've exposed her for a fraud. She's fucking spirits. <laughs> yeah, to the second one. But first, no, to the first one. Because you haven't proven me to be a fraud. Yeah, you, you, you haven't proven that. You know, I heard some bitches, probably a fat bitch, on YouTube saying that they exposed me to be a fraud. How? Like, ding, 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 Your time is ticking, bitch. Where, where, where is it? Where is my fraudulent activity? Where are my fraudulent statements? If you're saying this about me, but one thing I know, I am not a crook. Go ahead. So I don't argue. <laughs> you could I'm not gonna tell you could look at pictures of Nipsey. <laughs> See who he's working with, okay? I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> I'm not ashamed of, of loving him and helping him. Those jokes don't bother me. If they bother me, why would I say it? But the other thing, there's one thing I would never do. And besides, I've done this for about three years now when I was ill. And I came back in 2000. I've been ill for like six, seven years. Came back in 2018. My first reading was on R. Kelly. And um, people were saying and doing the same thing. This lady's crazy. This lady's wild. This lady said this. This lady said that. And nobody proved me wrong about R. Kelly. Okay. Then I started with Nipsey March 31st, 2019, the day he was assassinated. I have a whole bunch of readings on him. So I've given you a whole bunch of information to prove I'm a fraud and a liar. You can use it. I mean, I haven't taken it out of the public domain. So if you can get dates, times, she said this, she said that, here's evidence that she's lying, this doesn't happen, that doesn't happen. I've always said the same thing. From the very first day, Nipsey came to me, what he told me. I have always said it, I have not changed the story because he hasn't changed the story. If he changes, I'll change it. If anybody can prove that I'm lying, I will take it down. I'm very open to it. I have no problem being wrong. I have no problem being making a mistake. I have no problem correcting a mistake. I, I haven't had anybody brought bring many to me. Like little minor things. You know, I might have said one name, but I was thinking about the person's face, but I, I made a mistake with the face. Or I, I made a mistake one time I said the Super Bowl was California, but I was thinking of California in another context. I came back. I corrected it. I know I said this, but I meant that. I, I do that. I have no problem with that. But things about my readings, or people saying I'm lying about and they proved I'm a fraud, uh, I'm waiting. See, now I don't even pay attention. I'm not going to address every little thing people says about me anymore because it's stupid. I'm very, very busy. I'm very tired. I have a lot of things going on. I want, let me address two things and then I'm going to move out of that, okay? People keep emailing me, asking me for readings, and they don't listen when I tell them how this process goes. Some people said, I looked on your website for the readings and I couldn't book an appointment. I'm, I'm not going to put it there. I'm tired as it is. I cannot meet all of these reading demands when you give them to me. I have months, two months that you have to wait or just go somewhere else. I don't read everyone that comes to me because you have some money. I pick... My clients, everyone must submit a picture of themselves and a picture of the people that they're asking about, their names and the exact questions. 
If you're asking me to read someone that is physically dead, you must send their full name, pictures of them when they're alive in the body and when they're physically dead in the body. If you have casket photos, if you have hospital photos with them in comas or dying or dead, those are fine. I like to look at them. I can get a lot of information about them while they're alive, while they're in between in a coma or dying and then physically dead. And send the obituary. Because I want proof of what you're saying. If you say you don't have an obituary, don't, you, those are usually public. You get it from someone. But if it's a parent of yours and somebody says, I want you to read my mother or father, you don't have an obituary, I think that's kind of strange. If they didn't fuck with you, you don't fuck with them, because, and then why are you getting a reading on them? Because you say you're close to them, but you don't have an obituary. You don't have any casket photos. You, don't, you can't tell them how they died. You don't have a police report, especially if they were murdered and, and it's unsolved. I'm going to ask you for a police report. I'm going to ask you for an autopsy. Okay. If you don't have that, don't ask me deep questions. If you be like, oh, who killed them? What's their name? Where they was at? What the street was? What the bitch name? Who dick they put in their mouth before they got shot? Look, don't ask me all that. And you don't want to give me what I asked you for. I'm talking about, yeah, these people get that wild. I guess they know I'm that one to do this shit. Because I'll get wild and go right there with the motherfucker. But if you don't want to give me what I'm asking for, I'm not just going to sit here and do a general reading when it takes time. For people that know me and you watch me, I write my readings. And if you pay me right then, I'm not going to do your reading right then. Because I have a whole bunch of people that got to me before you did. I don't do call readings. I don't like to do call readings. Unless it's a 15 minute reading. And for 15 minute readings, there's only one question. Excuse me, for 15 minutes. That's it. Maybe I can work you in if it's just a 15 minute question. Is he cheating on me? Is his relationship going to change? I don't have to do a lot of time for that if it's 15 minutes. And then people are like, well, I asked for a general reading on this and I want a specific reading on my grandmother. I don't do general readings and I said that. I made it very clear if you asked me for a reading in an email and I said specific questions only. Specific is not general. A picture of you and your face. I want to see your eyeballs. No shade, no glasses. And whoever else you ask me about, I want to see their face and their eyeballs and their names and a specific question or questions. But if it's 15 minutes, you get one question. And I'm going to sit and you pay me for 15 minutes because you're cheap. Because a lot of people want to pay for 15 minutes and want to ask me two, three, and slide four questions in. And they want me to sit there and I have to then look and his spirit and see what the answer is, what's going on with it. Hi, Dawn. And so, no, and I pick my readings. So if you sent me, and then somebody, some people are like, oh, my mother needs a reading, my father needs a reading, here's a phone number, call them. No, they won't be getting a call. Honey, do you realize how many people contact me every day, all night, every night, every day? And I, I can't call everybody for free. Just sit up and call people on the phone. Again, those are my requirements. Before I get on the phone with you, you have to pay for the reading. Unless it's something that I want to ask you about and be sure about to see if it's something I want to do. But usually if it's someone physically dead and it's a murder case or someone died and you think that the doctor killed them or you think that the doctor said they committed suicide or the family said they committed suicide and you don't think they did, and you want me to see if they did, then I need what I just asked for. And I say that in the email. And if you keep flopping around and then keep asking me a question, I said I need the obituary. And then they go back, well, I don't think I have the obituary, um, but um, I have a picture of them uh, when, when we were growing up and they sent me a picture of... I didn't ask you. I, I was very specific with you. I wasn't general because I'm going to ask you to be very specific with me because you're going to pay me for my time. I've done years of free readings and people fucked me and took advantage of me. And I let them do it just to prove that I was worthy of being paid. You're not doing that to me anymore. I know I'm good at what I do now. I have a 15 minute reading. Thank you, Ambrosia, for the donation. Yeah, I'm going to get on that in a minute, too. 
I have a 15 minute reading. So I tell you now, but even if I tell you the price, it still doesn't mean I'm going to do your reading. My 15 minutes is 50. And that's just for now, for the New Year's. My 30 minutes is 100. Another 30 minutes is another 100. So 200 for one hour, which is cheap. It's kind of cheap. But for a lot of people, it's not. But even when I didn't have it as that, I only went up $5 from last year. People still want to whine and complain and fuck me around for that. It is what it is. And that's why I don't take everybody. Because a lot of people want something for nothing. And that's why when they say how much is that the first, I have to approve you. Send me your picture and the pictures of the people you ask about. Send your exact questions and the names. And then if I decide to take it, I tell them the price. They either take, hey Ruby, I missed you. They either take it or they don't. It doesn't matter to me. Because I'm so busy anyway. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, I know. To me, that's two hundred dollars cheap. And I want to throw throw ten to fifteen questions for two hundred deep. And want to give me deep, detailed answers. I'm not doing it in one hour. I'm I'm, I'm really tired at this point. That's why a lot of these people I cannot answer, because I'm tied up with doing other things and filling orders. I have a lot. I have several of the businesses, you know. Then I'm still working with Nipsey, and people know that, and I tell them that. That's why a lot of reasons I don't take, and if you can't wait, I'll give you money back. I just won't take it because people know if I'm working on something and Nipsey comes in here and says, hey, I need you to do this and do that and look at that, I'm going to drop everything for him. That's just the way that it is. That's the way it is. And if you don't like that, there are a whole bunch of readers around. Not, I'm not going to jump because you sent me an email and a few dollars. But if I don't, if I haven't answered you, it's not because I don't want to or because I didn't get your mess. I'm tied up with other things. And I'm tied up with clients that already paid me like a month ago. That I haven't even gotten to. Because the lady checked me today. I said, you know what? I can just go ahead and give you a refund because I know you've been waiting on me for a while. And I'm just, I'm exhausted. First of all, I don't sleep. I didn't really sleep much last night. I was up with Nipsey. And I was working on something for him that I didn't even finish. I'm going to go into some of it. That kind of bothers me to repeat it. I'm going to repeat a little bit of it. I'm going to go back over because I want to make sure that I am correct before I say this. Uh, about Kobe, Supreme, and Lauren. That's what he's been on me about. Well, no, I'm repeating it anyway. It's fine with me. It's my business, and I should be clear about what I'm saying. And sometimes people need it over and over and over because I'm not going to put it on the website because I'm not going to offer it to everybody. I'm not offering my services to everybody because of the drama I've dealt with in the past with women. On top of that, I'm not interested. And I think I'm, you know, this was all an experiment to me. And that's why when people, other psychics I spoke to at first said, you need to be more professional. And you, instead of typing it, you need to just have a sign up and put it on the website. I said, no, because this is just an experiment for me anyway. It wasn't something as a business that I was going to plan to do for the rest of my life anyway. I just wanted to do it to see if people would respond to it and to see what I'm good at it. So that's why I started to read. I mean, I've done reading since I was a child off and on. And I've done readings when I started the um, the television show Alexis K. Tyler Vagina Power in 2006. I was doing readings then and I started doing readings publicly 2000. And I was doing readings with people come to my house before the year 2000. So I've done these for a long time. And the physically dead were drawn to me. And so I started, I was doing for years for free. Going to hospitals, funeral homes, uh, hospice centers. I did this for free. Since 2000. And I got very ill and I thought I was going to die. And then Nipsey came in here and basically revived me. Changed, turned my life around. And, but I started with the R. Kelly, with 2018. And I wanted to see was I good. So I didn't take clients. I just did celebrities. I did public celebrities because it would be easy to find out if I was conceited or not. If I was lying or not. People went crazy 
with the R. Kelly one, and then they started verifying what I was saying. And then people from R. Kelly's camp started to contact me and said, where are you getting this from? Somebody in our, somebody, are you talking to somebody that knows? I'm like, I don't know anybody that knows you. The demon that knows R. Kelly told me. They're like, you know what? I, I, I kind of believe your ass because some of this shit you fucking saying, there is no way you would fucking know unless you were in there or you would fuck with him or you was on the spiritual crew he got. And I was like, so he does have spirit. They're like, all of them do. I said, oh, okay, so the demon was not lying to me. Excuse me, the king, the king demon, Baal was not lying to me. And that is the one who would also be Satan that is over. He's the prince of the air. Okay. That's when it started and I saw that as people started to go, guess what, guess what, guess what. Then I started doing it with all the other cases. People started asking me for the readings. So I started doing the private readings and they started confirming what I was saying. And it just, people started doing it. They just started doing it by word of mouth. But then there are a lot of very disrespectful people on top of that. Most of them are women, not men. Most of them are female and, and have a lot of problems. And even when I get readings, I don't disrespect the reader. If I don't like what they're saying, I know how to not go back and take my money somewhere else. But to argue with someone, I never do. And these women want to do that. So I'm not going to make this a permanent button in my store that you anybody can do. I'm not doing that. I, I think I'm going to pull away from this this year. And just only do the readings I like to do. I go do things I want to do. Like sing. Do other projects. And I have other talents that you still don't know about. That I don't discuss. So, uh, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> Another thing. It's a lady. She sent me a cash app. I'm going to say this one time. I'm not going to be done with this shit. I'm not going to bring it up anymore. Somebody sent me a donation today. This lady did. And I looked through her file. I saw she, she was on my cash app. And she had sent me small donations before. Like $20 here, $20 there. Today, she sent me $100. And then an hour or so later, she turns around and says, I want my money back because I didn't mean to give that to you. Okay, but I know you had to know. You see a, a name Besides everybody before you send them money. So I, don't, I, really, I know it wasn't an accident. You had to see who it was. I didn't have her email. I still don't have her email. Because she sent it through the cash app. And what I was trying to do. I declined payment. Because I wanted to find out. I was hoping she would send me an email. If she had my number. So I could see. Was this somebody that bought a product. And you got the product. But you didn't want to pay for it. I, I, I really didn't know what it was about. I knew I, The name looked familiar. And then that's when I looked. I said okay. This lady had given me $20 before. Just small. Small donation. I said okay. That must be where I know her name from. So I was hoping. Because I looked at the catch up. I didn't see an email. And I looked through my. My emails and I didn't see an old mail or sent mail or anything to this person. And, and okay, this is the way I do my business. I don't send money and I don't get refunds on the cash app. I just receive it from my cash app. I really don't touch it. I will tell my business partner who handles my finances to return it. So you, so I don't, I don't use it. I use my PayPal. So if you want to refund through the PayPal, I can easily do that. But I don't do it through the cash app. I um, let my business person handle my money, and then she will take care of it and send it through, through her account to verify. It so I have a witness. So I don't have to deal. People think about myself. I'm not. I don't handle that. Because I've had this problem before with bitches. You know, I want to be disrespectful to me. So I'm like, you know what? You're not getting the reading. As a matter of fact, you're not getting the product either. You're not going to curse me and disrespect me and think I'm going to be nice to you and I'm going to fuck with you. So this is what we're going to do. Give me your name and address. I will either send you the money order or have my business partner handle it. And you do with her. Don't ever fucking speak to me again. And, and we're done. And I forget about it. I move on. This person did this today, and so I told 
um, my partner about it that handles my shipping and my money. And I said, you, I'm forwarding this person to you. I can't believe she did this. And she said, sis, that wasn't an accident because you get to see everybody's name before you send the money to them. I said, she said it was an accident. I don't know who the person is. I don't think I'm over any product or anything because I don't see an email. And she has not even contacted me other than the, to me, if you're a grown woman, you're doing business, you're, you're clear with me, especially if you want to be in good standings with me and I haven't done anything to you. You don't do something like that and then not follow with the email to let me know what's going on. It's just a small little note in the cash app. So I said, you take it. I'm going to um, send you the money. You take the money out of my account and you send it through the other account. You deal with it and you send a note if you can see a note in there. And you tell her, don't ever send me another donation. Don't ever contact me. When someone starts to act funny with you with their money, that shows you something's wrong with them. There's a mental problem. No, I'm not going to blame the moon for it, okay? Because I don't do it. If I, if, I, if I want to buy something from someone, what I never do is buy it and they say, oh, I, I want my money back. Unless I get it and something's wrong with the merchandise, I don't do things like that. If I'm not sure, I just don't buy it. Because you create bad energy with business people and merchants that don't want to fuck with you. I never give somebody a donation and take it back and say, oh, I didn't mean to give it to you. That shows that person has a financial problem, a mental problem, and an emotional problem around money and lack or issues around it. I don't want to be in that energy. And you're not a friend of mine. You couldn't think too much of me to do that. And now I have to go through, I can't just click a button and send it back because I don't open the account. It's now just a big hassle to me, but I'm going to do it because I don't want the drama with this person because you already showed me there's something off with you. And I don't want her getting out in public saying I stole her money, I gave her a donation, and then I decided I don't want to give her the donation and she won't give it back. We get, We give it back. I'm just not going to get back to you directly. You're getting it back within the next 24 hours. I'm not going to say her name. I don't have a way to contact her, so that's the way I'm, why I'm doing it here. And why I'm telling everybody else, don't do it to me. If it's your first time, it will be your last time. Go do that to someone else. If you're not sure you want to donate to me, then just fucking don't. Because now I have to go through all this administrative shit. And paperwork to cover myself. And now it's out of my hands. My partner's hair handling it. Because I'm going to have proof and a backup. A lot of these things you think I handle by myself. I don't. So I hope she's listening. I'm not going to call her name. She knows who I'm talking about. And I wouldn't do that. But as a grown woman. She should have contacted me in the email. So that we could talk about it. And I'll tell her what I'm telling you. So this wouldn't have even had to be public. But since it is. And a lot of people do donate to me. I'm telling all of you. If you do not want to give it to me. And you're not sure. Please don't tell me you hit the button by accident. With my name. And I know you can see my name. And I know you have to go through a credit card in the process to send it. And then say you didn't mean to send it. You didn't know you were sending it. You just hit the button by accident and give it back. Don't do that to me. Because if you do that. I don't want you in my lives. I don't want your money. And when I give it back to you, don't ever send me a fucking dime. Because there's a lot of drama shit and negative shit attached to that dollar. How many other dollars you send, there's some fucked up shit around you. And I don't want it, but you feel like you could do it to me and we're still going to be cool? No, we're not. Take your negative money and your negative energy and whatever doubts you have around it, go take it somewhere else. Yeah, it's a Judas energy. And it just, it really pissed me off. I'm like, wow, she should have just kept this. Because now I'm not going to keep it. Because you said you didn't want me to have it. But you sent it. Now we have to reverse everything. Excuse me, I have to involve other people. So that's why I'm, let me, so I guess in a way, yes, yeah, good to tell you now, don't do it to me. Because if you do understand, if I don't owe you merchandise, 
first of all, if, if, if I, if you bought it from me and I already sent it to you and I can prove that I sent it to you, you're not getting your money back because you got my merchandise or the post office has it. Now that's not the case here. She didn't buy anything from me. I didn't see any evidence that she bought anything from me. I didn't see anything on its way in route to her. I can't prove it at this time. But you know what? You have a reading? Okay, I don't remember. You just have to send me an email to refresh it. So I'm going I'm to get off of that. But when you do things like that to me, now I don't I don't do first, second, third chances with stuff like that. Because for somebody to be that old, like a real grown woman, and to do stuff like that, and I can see if you was like a kid, I could kind of understand it. But if you're a grown woman and you do that, it's like little tricky shit like that. Stay away. Don't call me auntie. Whoever just sent me the message, don't call me auntie. I'm really, really serious. If I'm not your aunt, don't call me auntie. Close this message. And don't message me. I'm not answering messages during my life. No. Let me move into the reading. There is a young man. I put him on the altar. CJ. I've mentioned him before. I've done a reading. On CJ, if you look at the picture, I, I put it up a while ago. I'll probably put it up again tonight. CJ and Nipsey were both rolling 60s. He was murdered in 2012 after he left a party, went outside. To this day, there's a reward for his murder, information about it, because it has not been solved. And, um... They know... That it was gang related. And when I looked at the reading. I told her. The information that I was seeing. And I told her who I saw. And she sent me pictures. Because there were women involved. And that's the thing. The, the, the three men. That came up around Nipsey. CJ. Who was murdered. In, in LA. 2012. There were women involved. That a baby mama. He brought up the baby mama. But it was a wife. He brought up a wife and a baby mama. The wife didn't do it, but he mentioned the, the girlfriend or baby mama, somebody who was sitting on the side that backdoored him with another man and she was also playing with the ops. The Bloods and some, some other different groups along with informants and police, LAPD, were involved in his setting him up to be murdered. Okay. Fats. Nipsey's friend, Fats, who was murdered, was in 2017 around one of the witch's holidays. Because I remember doing a reading on Fats. Because he came up, he hangs with Nipsey, and he bodyguards Nipsey. Sometimes he'll come in and out with Nipsey. He also mentioned to me a wife and a baby mama. So, if or a lover. He had a lover on the side of the... The, the, the wife also has some children. He, he told me a Spanish lady. So, if any of y'all know Fats... Nipsey's friend, because they don't know. And if you can find out information on Fats, was Fats married? Did he have a wife? Did he live with a woman like a wife? Had children with her? And then have someone on the side? Have a girlfriend or a lover? I don't know if he was cheating on the wife or he had him and the wife broke up. But I kind of feel like they weren't broke up from what he told me. He had a woman or he had several women. He had cheated more than one time behind the wife's back. But he had a child or somebody... Someone else that was not the wife, but I see a Spanish lady or Hispanic, maybe black and Spanish or also Spanish or Mexican. With Fats, Nipsey's friends, Fats, who was shot at Nipsey's dispensary. I think it was at the weed store. He comes back up and also his killing had to do with the music. He shot, I remember saying, seeing that. Music industry, I saw black people, I saw Latin people, and I saw drug dealers and gangbangers, but I'm talking back to Fats, and he's been here with Nipsey, as well as CJ, and he's, what I'm seeing in the spirit, some of these people that are tied to CJ, Nipsey's friend, that's a rolling 60 that was murdered in 2012, 
coming from a, a, a gang party. Fat, his murder, working in Nipsey's weed store dispensary, was tied to rolling 60s, as well as some bloods, and female gang members, and people in the music industry. He mentioned the baby mamas involved in this, not his wife, just like CJ said, not his wife. But a woman he was messing with on the side that was also a gang member. Playing two sides against the middle. Both ends against the middle. Then they say Kobe Supreme. Kobe Supreme and Puma Baby Mama. He mentions he has the baby mama. I don't know if he has more than one baby or more than one baby mama. Or if he has a wife. But I see Kobe Supreme has a child or children or somebody. I, I, like I say, I could be getting this wrong because I haven't been too deep in this yet. I don't know if he has one wife or one baby mama. Or does he have more than one child by more than one woman? Or does he have more children, more than one child by one woman? But I'm kind of on the fence here. So I, he brings, Nipsey brings him up, which is all so tied to music. Nipsey's music and the rolling 60s. And when I looked at, Nipsey's very upset. I looked at Kobe Supreme's new video. I think he was shouting out Nipsey. And for some reason, and then I looked at the cards here. And I asked about him and Lauren. This lady, this baby mama cross, baby mama here. Has a lot of mental problems. And she's like Sybil. She has about 10 different personalities. I would say a minimum of 5 different personalities. Uh, I have even possibly drug problems. Allegedly, from what I'm seeing in the spirit. Emotionally not stable. Very sexually manipulative. Will manipulate and flirt with and have sex with some of Nipsey's friends. Or associates. To make deals and get money and opportunities. Thank you, Sabrina, for the donation. And uh, have told lies and painted castles, sand castles up in the sky with Kobe Supreme. Some of these other gang members, supposed to be Nipsey's friends and associates, and made promises to these people. And what bothers me so much about this is that these people were willing to make side deals and secret deals with her to backdoor Nipsey, thinking that they were going to get record deal, close deal, some type of opportunities, become stars, become bigger than Nipsey, or just as big as him, if they helped to move him out of the way. This lady is very treacherous. From what I am seeing in the spirit, she don't love nobody but herself. She will smile and show the dimples because so many people think she's cute and think she's a star and so special. Oh, a movie star that never was. A celebrity, yes. Well known, yes. But a Hollywood movie star, no. Television movie star, no. Has not been consistently a movie star or TV star. But this is the way these niggas see her. And want to screw her or screw what Nipsey had or think they're getting something special. So they've made some sexual deals. Some of these men, from what Nipsey are saying here, made sexual deals. Or made negotiation or flirting. She told lies to these men. Pretend I have this connection, I know this, I know that. I can get you this deal, I could get you that deal. And that was two years ago. And now these people are kind of looking at themselves. And they're looking at her. And they're wondering, what did I do? What did I do to my friend? Because this lady is a liar. I, I don't know. Lord, forgive me. 
Because allegedly I'm seeing this in the spirits. This lady is a sex addict and a drug addict and a compulsive liar and mental ill. Like mentally unstable. And you look at her on the outside and the physical appearance and people just don't want to believe this. Don't want to know. And, and Nipsey's saying to me, Lord have mercy, her mother might have known she was kind of slow when she was a little girl. But didn't want to admit it. A cute little girl with dimples, but her eye look a little cop like. She look a, like a, a little throwed off as a goddamn little girl. The mama didn't want to tell nobody, but the mama kind of wondered was something wrong with her child. Kind of off. I don't know if the mama's off like that in an actress and a drama queen and pretend to be something that you're not because. The mother looks one way on the outside, attractive, but in a, inside the mama got a, dialog, a diabolical mind. Or the actress pretend to show the world one thing and really is another. And had problems with her daddy. Problems with a couple of men. And she was off like that because of the way she was in high school. Skipping school, disappearing. Talking to men. In high school. Not stable in high school. Mine. Here one minute. Gone in it like two or three different people. It's like a, a MK Ultra mind control slave. A sex slave. Some she been off. That's why she, they, one reason they picked her for the industry because she's cold inside in a sociopath. Look you dead in your face and tell you a sweet lullaby and smile with them dimples looking like quicker than a cat lick his ass. That's how she is. A real calm, smooth, professional liar. Got real good game. And I look at this Kobe Supreme here they have got in the spirit. They are fighting now their disagreements with her and these other niggas. And Nipsey's crew and the ones that believe her and went had private deals with her could also do drugs and sell drugs and have sex addictions. Now, it's a lot of treacherous two-faced shit going on and a back and forth. Different people spying on this camp, that camp, telling this person one thing, telling another person another thing, trying to see what is going on. And ask her about what she said. She cannot deliver on the things that she said. She always have. Lord, how must have been a whore and a liar. Move around, slick, suck dicks, and do the crybaby. God damn it. Do the crybaby and get high. Look like she got a problem. I don't. Allegedly, I'm seeing this in the spirit. A sex problem and a drug problem. Open. Ass open. Mouth open. Just ass clapping. Oh, I mean, hey. She's talking about she's been celibate for two years. Nip said it's a lie. But she's been with somebody in his clique. Hang with all money in. See, but they want to take Nip all money out. Why are they doing these songs and shifting around and shit? On a video like they love him so goddamn much. Yes. And when you look in her eyes. They cold and look like a mental patient. Look just like a psych patient. Like nobody's home. Or something. If she's not naturally off. Like that. Then there's some type of medication there. Street. Med. Or prescription. In the spirit, allegedly. You and then this Kobe, allegedly in the spirit. When I looked at him, I just sat the other day and I listened to Nipsey. I watched him with the new videos and they look very nice. The cars, his clothes and stuff and the way they was put together. I like the cinematography and the videography of 
Kobe Supreme new video. But I see him and I look in his face. There's a heaviness on him. Because he got a lot of guilt on him. He know what happened to Nipsey. He know what happened to Nipsey. And Puma baby mama know what happened to Nipsey. Kobe and Puma baby mama was in a secret agreement together if they wasn't lovers. Or flirting real inappropriate like up on each other. So I won't say they fucking a half fuck, but they have been inappropriate with each other in the spirit. Allegedly, what I see. And the talks that they had was about helping the baby mama set up a deal to get as much money as she had out of Nipsey and his estate. She really not sorry the man is dead. From what I'm saying about Kobe, he's only sorry and have guilt because you did that. Or you knew it was going to be done and you didn't warn him. Because if you were rolling 60 and you was that close to him, you already knew. He had been threatened and warned before and you was close up on him, you knew. So that means Puma knew. And I see how all of you all are moving. And y'all include Nipsey or his voice in your shit because you feel like it'll sell better. If you got his name in the shit, or act like you love him. They're like she act like she's waiting on him. You are so heartbroken that you stick your fingers and jam them up in your ass, holding your legs closed real tight, cause you can't be with no another man, cause it just hurts you so deep that he gone, and you is still mourning, you is still grieving, you is still hurting. Because you missing the crib. But you have fucked it. And you fucked one in all money in. Like a couple of them with a big stomach. I'm not going to say no name but with a fat ass stomach. That's in Nipsey's crew. You have fucked it. Allegedly in the spirit. You're not been a virgin. Your pussy's not tight like virgin. From the day you were shot. March 31st. 2019 up till February 2021. You is not celebrating and grieving. You don't care really. You don't care like that. I don't think you care about mm, 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 the money is the mode of Lil Wayne. That's what you care about. Mona Lisa. In the spirit. Allegedly. That's, that's what Nipsey said about you. You're cold and calculated. And you hate Nipsey. You resent him because he did not want you. When he found out you was a pass around and he cut you off and he could have taken it. He was embarrassed because people tried to tell him that you was no damn good. I mean, everybody that got with you, Trey Song and Lil Wayne and that. Not that you was always a baby mama and a bride maid and never a goddamn bride. Hmm. She was such a star. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How oh, I wonder what you are. Up above. Star so bright on your knees. Doing a crybaby in your ass and sucking dicks every night. See that? See, that's what kind of star you is. Twinkle, twinkle. Little star. That's what, that's what you are. That's what you are. Allegedly in the spirit. And the one thing that keep coming up about you, and Kobe is supreme, is this here. Huh? Huh, Twinkle? This white horse death card, goddammit, because you put the nigga, you were on that white horse, wasn't you, girl? You was on that white horse with that boy out there on that screen with that white, which represents what? Death. You was on that. White 
course, and this is what always come up with you and Quick Jane, and they come up with Kobe too. Kobe. Then the spirit. This is what comes up in the cards for you too. And uh, say you make it dig hard on God. He found you sexually attractive. He wanted to fuck you. As well as was jealous of Nipsey. And wanted to be him and be where he at. And wanted what Nipsey had. But he had already cut you off before he was assassinated. If they're protecting you. They're only protecting you because they are protecting themselves. Because of the backdoor agreement that they made with you. The kilo, ride that white horse. <sighs> Doubt that pee. See, that's I mean that keeps coming up here, and this is about money. Kobe is concerned about his money and the deals he had with Nipsey, and now the backdoor deal he had with you. But he's his heart is heavy. I see he has regret. He had regret. He said, "Why did I fuck with this bitch?" He act like y'all cool and shit, but underneath he I uh, regret fucking with this bitch. He really regrets the agreement he made with you. Because you see, like a lot of people, different people are saying, you're not what you presented to be and you're lied. And it's really amazing because I also know that you're still talking to people about trying to come shoot me. You still want somebody to shoot me. But you think that I don't know. You think I... We're going to find out. You, you, that's what you really were like, wasn't it? Just like you watched them shoot Nip. Oh, I'm not alleging now. I'm not giving a disclaimer. I know that's what you want to do to me. But you don't have the nerve to do it. With your coward ass. With your sneaky, lying, passive, aggressive, backstabbing, cold-hearted, cold-blooded, treacherous, slick, I'll suck a dick ass. See, I, I, I know. You, you, I got to give it to you. I ain't gonna give you a whole hand clap. I'm gonna give you a tap of my finger. You got guts, girl. And you got a lot of nerve. You're a cold... Dark hearted, backstabbing, treacherous, mental ill, psych patient bitch. That's because you are crazy enough. I tried to tell people I th that look, this bitch is crazy. She did let it really have a mental problem. She's crazy enough to really try to get a hit put out on me. You think I don't know? Huh. You, now, you, you put Nipsey in the hangman position, and now you have Kobe, Supreme, in a hangman position, but the judgment is here. So, Nipsey has risen from the dead, and the dead are speaking. You're also with the King of Pentacles here, which would be a powerful warlord and a a leader, a mob figure over the gangs. Got his foot in good business and politics in the day and gang business and murder and warfare at night. Your leader. I'm not going to say his name. The way I can describe him, and Nipsey said this to me, and I said, you know what? It's two of them. One big and bald headed. See, and it showed now. Now Kobe, you Kobe is like this. You have Kobe like this. He's in a hangman position because he's your lover. If y'all haven't been fucking, if y'all not lovers on a regular basis, then I guess you all are very close, and you do business together. But some of this is sexual, and it is tied around what, what he did to his friend. That's also your ex lover. And your baby daddy. Mm. You two are partners in that and working on making money off of that and keeping it hidden. And both of you made an agreement to come up and do this together to this man. Allegedly in the spirit. And one of you, or if not both of you, are drunks and deal with a lot of 
depression around shooting, the shooting of your friend and your ex-lover and your baby daddy. And who was at the head of it? The only way I can describe it, salt and peppers here. Salt, 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 salt and peppers here. So, 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 salt and peppers here. Because one fat, bald-headed and black, and one fat, bald-headed and white. Salt and pepper. Fat, black, bald-headed pepper. Salt, 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 so, salt and pepper here, and we get to push. Come on up, push it. Yes, pull it by day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Night work up a sweat. Yo, 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 yo. Salt, 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 salt. Salt and pepper, God damn it. A fat old black nigga and a fat old white nigga. Salt, salt, salt and pepper. So when I be talking about salt and pepper, God damn it, that's what we gonna call they big fat old A. Hey, bald head A. Hey. Salt and pepper here. Salt, 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 salt. That's them. That them. Except this is two women's. A light skin one and a dark skin with two men's. A fat, bald head, black pepper. And fat, Ball head, white pepper, salt and pepper, god damn it. Them two, right down. Dead down, right down. Is the one that's over Kobe Supreme, Nipsey, all money in, and, and help to deal with <laughs> Spinderella. That the baby mama, Spinderella. Because she spin them lies. And suck dicks and lift her high and high. That spent that she's spending it now until. Along with salt and pepper. Dancing. Yo, 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 yo. Cooling by day and at night. Oh, working up a sweat. Come on, girl. Let's go. Yo, yeah. They dancing. Then you looking this way. Why the niggas spin the relas that way? Sucking dicks. <clears throat> We're going to do it with fat pepper. The fat black pepper. That Dr. Pepper, goddammit. I'm a pepper, he's a pepper, wouldn't you? Dr. Pepper. This. Push it real good. Right. <laughs> oh my back. Oh Jesus. I'm trying to trying to do this. Just trying to make it quick. <laughs> she took the phone. <laughs> my young granddaughter took the phone. <sighs> but shit. Yup. The shit is fucked up. I'm telling you right now, a ledge in the spirit, goddammit. This shit is fucked up. Them two right there. <laughs> salt, 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 salt and peppers here. These two niggas. The two niggas. Yeah, we can call <laughs> the black pepper. Also Dr. Pepper. Fat and black with the box. That's Dr. Pepper. Come off, drink that shit. Sweet and black and rich like that. And put your fucking ass in a trick. Call you to a meeting at the marathon and get your ass shot and shit. That that, that what Dr. Pepper and, and uh Black Pepper will do to you. Then White Pepper got on camera. You see that? Nipsey, you see you see that? He tries to done, do good. And he got shot in his own hood. That's what White Pepper had said. You'll figure it out. You'll look. You see the white man that was Nipsey friend in music and was older with a bald head hanging with the black one with the bald head. That's an older man. That's the OG. That used to be Nipsey manager but say he still had him under a 10 year contract. That that black pepper that right there. That Dr. Pepper. That doctor that shit up. I ain't gonna say no name. You figure it out. Them two be together. There you go, Skittle. That white pepper. That white pepper right there. They be together all the time. Salt and pepper. 
And now you see they be in the weed business. You see. Agnes it was. Took that. Got a percentage of that. They wanted that and money from that. See, that was also was. See, all this shit like I told you. All that was tied together. The record. The, 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 the. Yeah, 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 definitely that black pepper. That Dr. Pepper. Salt and pepper here. You see? Yeah, you see? Don't they look like salt and pepper? They just the male version of it. So, so, so. That's them. That's them. They just ain't got no pussy. See? <laughs> oh. They conspired and put all this together. And they still doing it. And now, Dr. Pepper. Salt. So I'm sorry. Salt. That's salt. The fat one. Fat white ball. That's salt. And the other one with black pepper. The salt and pepper. That's right. Salt and goddamn pepper. Pepper. I'm not talking about that, that dog pepper up there on the Churchy Chicken commercial with Esther with that cocked over gray wig. Because that pepper will be too little. We're talking about a big, big nigga. So that is pepper right there. And the white man is salt. I'm sorry. Salt and pepper though. But I got the overall right. Salt and pepper. I just did with two pepper. White pepper and black pepper. Did that's white salt. The fat white one with the bald head, that's salt. And the fat black one with the bald head, that's pepper. Dirty as hell. But say he love Neil. See, he in this right here too. Because if you and all money in, and use a rolling 60, from what Nipsey told me, and from what I'm seeing in the spirit, they knew what was going to happen to Nipsey. And I have always told you that. All them sixes were not out of town. All them all money in now. Not all sixes, because there's a lot of sixes had nothing to do with this, and they love Nipsey, and they are heartbroken and still grieving. Not all of them. That's not what I said. I said some of them, but that, that particular one, Pepper, salt and Pepper. Pepper, they used to manage Nipsey. Oh, he definitely by that. By that wet word. He, for some reason, I saw this man liking to do this to younger men and young boys. He doesn't see young men and young boys as his equal. He looks at them like uh, pawns or, or animals or things to move around, to do your will or to do what you say. And if they don't, they get punished and will put them up, sick them up to shoot a nigga. To commit crimes. He'll do them, but then he'll use certain younger ones to do it. I wasn't surprised they already live here. They already be in and out here doing business. To get them to do something and then reward them. If you do this, I'm going to raise you up here. I'm going to give you this deal. I'm going to give you this opportunity. You'll be able to come here. You'll be up under me. You, you, you'll be up under my wing. They give them incentives to assassinate certain people, to commit certain crimes. And one thing he was saying to me, <clears throat> you see that that's going, that's fine. Let me go and charge this because I'm going to finish this little bit and then go. Um, one thing it was saying to me about this person, this producer, and this manager. I was managing Nipsey for years, and Nipsey wanted to pull away who was involved in ordering the assassination. I kept hearing Nipsey and Nipsey told me they had words back and forth. And he was saying things, you know, like I said before, I made you, you're going to do this to me after all I've done for you, after all I've given you, after all of the opportunities I've set up for you, you owe me, and he kept saying, I don't, 
I don't owe you. And then I heard him telling the other one, telling Saul and some other people, he is getting out of hand. He, this, this young nigga off the chain, he is disrespectful, loud mouth, hard headed, won't listen to nobody and won't do what nobody say. You just fucking do what you want to do. But from what I got with that was double speak. He, a part of him, and some of the other ones feared Nipsey. Because you can think for yourself, you are very independent and self-sufficient, and you have put in work, you've done everything we told you to do. And then you get up and do things on your own, and you have your label, and you're getting the respect of the younger crowd, while this person was in jail and away. You are getting a lot of momentum, you're getting a lot of love, you're getting a lot of respect. Not just in a community in L.A., but other places. And you are able to do what a lot of them couldn't do. And that is infiltrate other gangs and make alliances and make people love and respect you from other gangs. And if I keep letting him do this, he is going to take control. And I won't be able to control the hood anymore. I will lose their respect. I will lose all the power and control if he continues to keep to rising. And he keeps building. And then he has people working for him. And he offers his record label. He builds up artists. He gets deals. He gets political power. He gets recognition in the industry and media. He's becoming a media darling. People love him. They admire him. They love his story. They love his energy. Then they'll forget about me. I'm the older one. I started this. I am the leader. I should be the one they look up to. I better rein him in and get control. Oh, well, what if you cannot rein him? Because there was a meaning. What if you cannot rein him in? You've tried to talk to him. You've warned him. You've threatened him. And I think there might have been a physical altercation with them when they're saying Black Sam. You just go have to shot, shoot the gun up in the air and if she still would not break and bow down and be a slave or a punk. And he kept getting stronger. He kept strategizing. They knock him down. He gets back up. He starts over. You take his stuff. He goes to get it back. I tell him what to do with this young nigga. He can't be controlled. He won't listen. I'm going to have to teach him. I'm going to have to kill him. And told him. This is, you're going to make me kill you. You're going to make me do something. You, you, you keep disobeying me. I consider this a sign of disrespect. You keep going against me. You don't want to be under me. You don't want to do what I say. And he was very strong. Very strong man. Back straight. No, I want to work for myself. I want to stand up for myself. I created businesses for myself. I don't owe my life to you. I don't owe all of my things to you. I don't have to be up under you. Yes, you do. You're going to follow rules, guidelines, and procedure, and I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you pull away. You are not going to start something and compete with me and then go above me and you be known and I not. I'm going to have to rein you in. Even if I have to rein you in and lay you down, I'm telling you, this is what Nipsey told me in the spirit. These are the conversations that were going back and forth with salt and pepper. And people and all money in and that click they knew. And <clears throat> some of them wanted this to happen because they felt like they would rise up off of it and benefit off of it. And that's what they're trying to do. Some of them people didn't love that man. And they were not his friends. And that woman that's supposed to be his life partner. Puma, who really was not his life partner, never was, never will be, was in it for the game and the money. It was her assignment, like you send a call girl out on a call to see a particular client to trick them and rein them in. You have a certain amount of time on the assignment to trick the nigga. Be in and out, steal from him, because he's telling me what I'm saying, spirit, she stole from him, stole money from him. As well, and was going back reporting to niggas and helped to set him up. Look, I've said this in readings before, and you're stealing from him now with your friends, and it's something they still haven't gotten. 
that they still want it because I don't see this quite going the way she wants it to go and making the money she wants to make her and the friends. His so-called friends. And this one is the one that Nipsey is really worried about and really heard about. So he kept talking about this one. I've looked at this one before and mentioned this one before. And then he went into some other details, and I, I'm not going to get too deep into it because I want to go back and check it to make sure I'm hearing him correctly. Another thing he said that him and Kobe had done business together before, and they had done illegal business together before. And one thing, if I am hearing Nipsey correctly, he said, Kobe has a brilliant mind. He's really good with numbers and moving around numbers and manipulating numbers, just making it look like it's one thing on paper, but it's really another thing. Lying. He can look. I'm wondering, does this man, does Kobe Supreme have a photographic memory? Is it certain things that he can see and without paper and pencil remember? Especially around numbers and scenarios, and then we'll flip the script. He's a very good actor and a scammer. He's a scammer. We're dealing with credit cards, drugs, lying, presenting someone to somebody, telling them one thing, and it's really another thing. Misdirect them. So while you're looking at them this way at the door, somebody's in the back. That's just what Nipsey's saying. And Nipsey keeps saying about credit card fraud and bank fraud. He mentioned with Kobe, he kept saying, ask Kobe, where's my Brinks truck? And where's my money that you stole? But from what he's saying, it's I'm trying to get this right. I really didn't want to say this because of. Uh, want to make sure I don't want to lie and I want to make sure I hear this correctly in the spirit what this man is saying he was involved in some type of robbery and he has the money and there's a certain serial number on the bills that the bank has listed as stolen but they cannot find and there's something tied to the Brinks truck there was crimes committed in the Brinks truck that's why I'm wondering, where's Nipsey's Brinks truck? Or has it been broken down? Because I haven't seen it. Have you all seen the Brinks truck? Or I don't know if they gave it back to Black Sam. Because he said the Brinks truck is dirty. And there are crimes on the Brinks truck. And inside of the Brinks truck. And there's money that Kobe knows about that the feds still want to know where it's sat. Allegedly. This is what I heard in the spirit. He's a thief. Allegedly. In the spirit, that's what I hear. On the other side, unresolved debt and unresolved theft. As well as money stolen from Nipsey. He showed me, he said, Kobe has files and documents that he hides. Involving around some theft around Nipsey. Tied to the Marathon store and the Brinks truck. Not just him. Pepper. I won't say salt was in it. Pepper. Was involved in these types of murder, robbery. While he was young, 70s, 80s. Before he went to prison. And then they got out, Nipsey sang to me, 90s. 90s, early 2000s, there were other things. But yes, but he's saying Kobe. 
That was supposed to be his friend. I trusted you. I was loyal to you. You backdoor me. And you're still lying. Can you keep my money? He said there's unaccounted for bills. And the baby mama know. Allegedly in the spirit. He is dirty. Dirty now in the spirit. And his heart is heavy with guilt because he got a dead man on him. And when I look at Pepper in his interview talking about Nipsey and in that documentary, Waka Flocka Mama, Big Day Up. That is a true psychopath, a killer, who enjoys killing young men. I see he's good at extortion and robbery and physical assault. And when he was in jail and prison, I saw these things that he did. People were scared of him. I guess scared of him now, and he would extort young men. You better tell your mama to send this or that, or this or that might happen to you. It might not be. Very violent, very vicious, very cold. He thrives on the rush of assaulting and attacking young men and murdering them or having others put them up to do it has power and fear and murder. Doesn't care about murdering young men and then watching their mothers cry while he watches them and then they wonder what happened and he knows that he did it. The other young man came up who said they did the same thing to him who died in Las Vegas who's a rolling 60. Little janky, something like that. I did a reading on him as well. Said they did it to him. This is not the first one they did this to. They enjoy killing their own, like a pack of hyenas, pack of wolves. Backstabbing and steal everything that person has, and they say it belongs to me. You came into the gang, I helped you build it. When them people had to work and earn it. No, I helped you, I'm going to take it, we're going to consume it. Absorb it back into the group, and we're not going to speak about it. We're not going to answer any questions about what happened to the person because we don't know, but yet we do know. He says this about this Kobe person, this Kobe Supreme person. He keeps telling me there's another room in that marathon. We keep pointing downstairs. I wonder, there's a room downstairs. We were talking about where they have this meeting at. Where the shit start jumping off at inside of the marathon. And then, oh boy, I don't want to say this part. Um, Nipsey talks about fucking women in the store. He said that women would come to the store for him to fuck them in the store. He said all of these women had the same idea. They had the same bright idea. They believed that if they come and fuck him at the store, they were going to be the only ones that fucked him at the store and the only ones that thought of fucking and sucking his dick at the store and were going to get him to marry them and commit to them. And a couple, he got pregnant, and one, I'm seeing an abortion. Not because he asked her to do it, but in a way he kind of, because he wasn't going to give her, they didn't know each other. Women do this to men all the time. They see a fabulous man that has everything going for him, very charismatic, makes a lot of money, famous, popular in a certain region, has this, that, and they want to belong to him. So they go and sleep with them and suck them off and like groupies do and they think, okay, now you're going to be with me, you're going to like me because I got the best pussy and best head. And they don't even know him. He, the man ain't even bought you a pack of M&M's. But you feel like, well, we can get past that if I do this and that to him. He's going to be, he said, a lot of this was going on at his store. 
Then he went down. He's like, it's a room. He was fucking these people in his room. So I'm wondering what kind of room he has, like a chill room, or TV, you're relaxing, or like a bed you could fuck, suck, smoke, and chill in the room. He said it was like that, one a place like that in his store, and these women would come over there, and he, he pulled out two or three women that he pulled out. One or two of these, I wonder, was a marathon model, because he said he was fucking uh, a couple of marathon models, and he was fucking one lady that also dealt with porn. Shit, I don't know. I hope I'm hearing this correctly. And he talked about two of them. And he said that these women like pills and powder. He said, and one of them, he 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 was upset with both of them that he was saying this to me. And I said, okay, Nipsey, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to say what the fuck you're saying. He said he was not in a serious relationship, but he had been fucking them for a while. And they wanted a serious relationship. He said they was chilling. We was cool. I would help them. I would protect them. I would look out for them. But I wasn't committed to neither one of them. I was dating them. It was like we was friends. We was chilling. I didn't fall in love. He's like we had an understanding. And then he said the model. It's like one or two of the models. He said Puma. That's why I told y'all. Don't underestimate Puma baby mama. Because that fucker is a real fool. And the idiot. I don't underestimate her. I said the fucker flighty like, but I'm talking about this fucker got about four or five personality. Fucker be smiling one time, and you see them dimples, and that bitch will get you somewhere, if she can, or get a nigga to shoot your fucking ass while she rolling the fucking film. And you don't even know she did it. Then get up there and smile on the camera, show the dimples, because that's what niggas like. You wouldn't even know the fucker did it. See, that's how that's what I see when I look at this fool. This is a fucking fool. This you 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 think she don't let that he he and talk and thought fool you and I'm grieving and I'm healing. This is fucker crazy. I have always told y'all this fucker didn't have a mall upstairs. Cause I know that she talking to two people about shooting me. Ding dong, the witch is dead, the witch is dead, the witch is dead. Ding dong, the wicked witch. See, we're dealing with the wicked witch of the east and, and good with the Glenda, the Glenda the Good Witch. She wants to kill Glenda the Good Witch. And she hangs out with the wicked witch. In California, because the wicked witch is with that sissy witch. They with that sissy witch. She with it. Wanna kill me? Because they don't like the shit I say. We in the Wizard of Oz, god damn it. She off to see the wizard. She trying to get the wizard. And the banker from Monopoly. How must it to give her the green light on shooting Glenda the Good Witch in the dirty side? And what her ex nigga say, come out of my fucking mouth in the dirty side. Oh yeah. This fucker ain't stable. I know about you. We know about you. And they know about you on the other side. And he said she ran them, them models that scared of that girl. They scared of Lauren. She said to him or threatened him or put somebody on him or I, I know he's some she, she said Nipsey said, allegedly I'm in, in the spirit that girl is scared. They am scared them girls off, or ran the marathon girls off, or one I'm pregnant, or both that had been pregnant by Nip, or she thought they was. I'm telling you, Puma baby mama can be real calm, and then go off in a fit of rage, just fuck her crazy. I'm telling I don't know if she done got her uh, uh, goddamn prescription for Prozac or some kind of mental ill medicine. I don't know. But this fucker got a temple. And wow. Real goddamn wild. And hang with them niggas that'll try to sick them. I know because she's trying to sick them on me. The girls, where, tell me, if I'm picking up the wrong thing, where's the marathon models at? Huh? 
Well, in the marathon girls that be up there switching their ass half butt naked up there for nip. Why is she the only one in this door? Because he told me he was fucking several of them. You know, not at all the same time. Maybe rotate, but he said the last two. And then it's another girl. That was going around bragging that she was fucking him. He said, you dumb bitch. He said, tell her I said that she's a dumb bitch. Come in now on that pill and powder. Beg me for powder and pills. Want me to protect her. Leave out. Wiping that white shit off the tip of her goddamn nose with some of them ball up and a piece of paper. Have her some of that shit and be down there and I been her fuck her all in the ass. She like the way I fuck her be down there. I, mean, <laughs> I said, Nipsey, so the lady sound like a fucking horse, a donkey. <laughs> So she make a certain sound when he fuck her in, in the ass. So she like the bent over. Uh, young. Uh. <laughs> you want me to? He says, yeah, she'll know who the fuck I'm talking about, a dumb bitch. She gonna sit there and sell me out and tell my baby mama about me and tell her all my mother. I said, oh, pull me to my yeah, scary ass bitch. She let her threaten her and tell all my motherfucking business, but then gonna tell people she was down with me and fucking me. And I liked it. If he said I did like it fucking her, because I like the sound she make. She bent over and open her ass and clap her ass and do what the fuck I want to do. He said, but she want that powder and them fucking pill. And I know that I couldn't trust her to be nothing else. But a freak bitch, he said, I, 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 I tested her. And I know she didn't have the mental capacity to handle my business or run my store or, or be my wife or do nothing like that. She was easy. He said, then it was another I was fucking. She was doing porn. She come out there uh, and acting real elegant and classy. Hi, how you doing? Mm -hmm. I keep wiping your nose, bitch. Tell me that pot will be up there around the side of her. Tell me that the bitches I was fucking, yeah, they was fine. And they was nice to me, but a lot of them was fucking drug addicts. And just fuck, that's all I do to them. Get them in that stove, corner them off in they ass, and take dick and run it in their corner pocket while they back down hollering and sweating on that powder. He said, I'm dry, just dry dick. And then they get mad at me when I don't want to commit. And when they see other bitches coming in the stove, doing, I make them do the dance and make them do that same, uh, uh, make them do the same sound off in their ass. They want to get mad at me and start shit and go tell niggas my business. Said one bitch went and told a nigga the blueprint of the store. Tried to set the nigga up to be robbed. Or want to try. I'm, this was, I'm listening to this shit. Last night I said, Nipsey, you want me to get. Yeah. Said the bitch will know who I'm talking about. Tell me then the bitch is a scary bitch. She going to let my baby mama punk her and run her off from everything that. She helped me with and that I help her build and establish and her old scary dick sucking bitch. I'm fucking her and the way I'm going deep all in this bitch ass. This bitch should have been a rider, man. But this bitch is scary. Do dope and fucking dick. Then all my baby mama got to come up and do and say boo and the bitch starts shaking and go running and fucking high. And tell me you is a stupid bitch and I want to let you know you's a stupid bitch. Bitch on the other side, you's a dumb bitch. That's all you good for, bitch, is catching calm, bitch, and sucking dick. That's all you can do, stand on your toe like you took ballet class at five years old, bitch, and plie and do all kind of la lift, leg, lift, and perch your toes, bitch, and bend over in your ass and open your cheek, bitch. I can buy, you know, see, I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't want to say that. They fuck these, that's what they did to me, now they not riding for me. The bitch is a scary, dumb bitch. That turn trick and do porn and suck dicks. And now the bitch won't even stand up for me and tell people what the fuck that she see. But back there like a goddamn catcher catching cum and catching nut for me. And time my she'll ride for me. And just whining and shit and slurring on the pipe. Singing on the fucking mic. And now this what this bitch do. Now this bitch is quiet on me and won't come. 
So, Nipsey, let me get this straight. You want me to get up here on camera and say that that lady is a dumb bitch because she was sucking dick and go back there and make hee-haw sound like that donkey up there on that hee-haw joke and clap her ass and drop it low. And now the lady hiding and won't stand up and tell what she seen. She said, yeah. And then they mad, wonder why I won't commit to them, why I wouldn't marry none of them, and why certain of them, I didn't want them to have no baby by me, and be me, because the bitch sell out. Now they want to brag and say I used to fuck him, and everybody know that I was around him, and see, you stupid bitch, that's why that's all you got from me, some crumb or dope, and some peel, and I let you come up there every goddamn week, and come and your ad then go in there and sing my rap song, bitch. That's, that's what, that's why, that's why. Cause I, I could see it on you. I could see it then. You was a scary bitch, but you like to be a catcher for these nuts and dick. I said, Nipsey. So you think I'm just going to make them come forward? That I get up here and tell them that that's what you feel. And then he says, that's what I know. He said, where they at? Where they at, though? I thought, oh... That dick they done took and all that dope that they done snorted and all the pill they done popped and hung around me and got clothes and money and I paid their bill and look out for them and shit. And then they in there, uh, all that shit. He said, this what the thanks I get? All that work I put in and going in their ass in and out, that's what, this is what I get. I said, I said why do I have to tell them that? I don't even know. I mean, I don't. He said, yeah, one, I'm holding some of my stuff and some of my gold. He said, one, I've got some things of mine that she's hiding and scared to come forward and give and tell. See, she's a scary bitch. That's why a lot of them bitches, they come to my store, I just run dick. Because they scary bitches. They really want to bite me. And they really want to bat that shit. They just wanted what they could want and be around because they was pretty and fine. I'm supposed to have them on my arm and fuck them and live this lifestyle. But when it really get deep, them bitches is running like a square bitch. He's like, I don't tell the bitch what the fuck I said. I said, okay. So the lady, she hee-haw and they get up there and open their ass wide and they... And all that powder. And, and they be back there, back there mumbling. And can't breathe good. From so much losing oxygen. About to pass out from dick up in them. And, and then there's a weak punk bitch. She's basically, yeah. She's a weak punk bitch because they hiding. And they won't come out and ride for me. But they used me. And took my stuff. And took my favors. And had me doing stuff for them. And giving them stuff. And now you can't. They ain't know where to be found. They know what happened to me. So I'm telling it. I mean, I, hey, I, look. I hope that I am interpreting this right in the spirit. I hope I, 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 I look, I, uh. Again, these are reading, these spiritual reading, these is alleged. And, um. Uh, you know, I, it's what I'm, I think I'm in from the other side. He's upset with these people. These so-called friends that he said are setting them up, setting him up, and helped to put this plan together. They knew this was going to happen to him. And then he said these women that run at him all the time, that was always running at that store, hanging around there, throwing themselves on him. He said, and then when I would try to fuck them, and get to know them. He said a lot of them didn't have really nothing in their head. And a lot of them really wasn't about me. He said he felt like they didn't like him. They didn't care about him. They really wasn't interested in him as a human being. He said they wanted stuff. Or the ops had sent him over there. He said some nigga, he was fucking this girl... That was fucking another nigga behind his back. That was from a rival gang. Wanted to set Nip up. He said she didn't know. But he knew. They sent bitches on to try to fuck him. Him and his brother. And then robbed them. That's also what he was saying. He said but they didn't know. I could see them. 
I could see through them and I know that it was some nigga. If the nigga couldn't get to me, they sent a bitch that they know I might like the bitch and like the way she look and want to fuck the bitch. I mean, he's, this is last night I'm up and he's telling me this stuff and he been saying like for the past two, three days. So a lot of times he'll say stuff and I'm like, wait a minute, maybe I didn't hear it correctly. So let me, I said, wait a minute, you said women were doing this to you? Women, women were in the store doing this to you? He said, yeah. He said, now they can't be found. They let, he said, they let his baby mama pay them off or scare them and run them off. Because I'm asking, maybe it's just me. Do you see the marathon girls? The models he had in the store still modeling on the marathon website with the baby mama. I don't catch everything because I'm busy and I'm tired. I have so much going on. Please correct me. Are they around? Do they talk? Do they do an interview? Are they telling you what they saw? Are they telling you what they know? Y'all tell me. Because y'all see more shit than I do. And y'all be informing me. Do you see the marathon girls inside of the marathon? The ones that Nipsey picked. His models. Y'all, do y'all see them? Because I don't know. Because he's not, he's saying he don't see them. So, I'm trying to interpret the man's message correctly. I'm trying, I'm trying to hear Am I hearing him wrong? Do y'all see them girls up there with Lauren? And modeling like they was. Do you see them? Because I'm not saying they're not there. I'm just saying, thank you, Latif. They set this man up. This man was overkilled and he was ambushed. The people around him and his friends, the people in that gang, on the permission and the green light, of Dr. Pepper. Pepper. And salt and pepper. Put it together. And now salt and pepper also deal with weed. They brand some weed. Salt and pepper. God damn it. Because they didn't want him to have it. You're not going to be up on us. You're not going to be our slave. You're not going to bend over on your knees. And clap your ass cheek. And you got to go. And we ain't going to let you walk away and run everything. We're not going to deal with the competition. We're going to lay you down. They don't respect anybody younger than them that's running. It would be too humiliating and they could not deal with it. And he said some of these bitches was in that shit running a fucking mouth that he was fucking at the marathon store and at the hotel. Hotel. He go in a hole, go in they holes and in they tails. That's what the hotel for. For the whole to spread a tail. Why they on that powder and on that molly. And get his nuts thick and his dick long and jolly. Ha! Ah, yeah. Santa Claus is coming to town. Getting these bitches Christmas in July. And then a lot of these bitches went no fucking good. See, he sees it now. He didn't see all of them back then. But he sees them now. And he's sitting back and he said they knew a lot of my business. Because some of them he said he did business with. And some of them girls back in the day were selling their pussy for nil. And selling dope for nil. Nip is a pimp. And now all of a sudden. They know where it's around. See, it's just like the baby mama, Puma, try to act like she got so much control and they were so close. But he, once he seen she was a whore and a path around, he thought back fucking Tanisha. Because he knew Tanisha was really down. She was always down. Even though they fought, he fucked around her, she fucked around him. Tanisha, love Nip. She was down. She wouldn't have killed Nip. I don't believe it. And I never have said it out that she did. I, she wouldn't have did that. He made a mistake thinking that he had stepped up and got something better. And it got something much worse. And when he saw she wasn't what he thought. He started back fucking around and doing his own thing. And he started back fucking Tanisha. Now, what he said to me. If he was so close to her. 
And they was a life partner. Why was he fucking around on her? Wouldn't get engaged and wouldn't marry her. And she supposed to be in vagina power and put a nigga on lock with her pussy. Got star power in her pussy ass. And got star power celebrity in her ass. Well, why couldn't her pussy lock down and control that goddamn man and stop that man from cheating and going to the hotel and in the marathon fucking bitches too they cannot talk but they can only make sign language and make different sound but they could not form no word called dick in them and then take them to the hotel and then fucking Tunisia you got so much control and, and you got that walk and you, 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 you got that magic. My pussy is magic in the 24 carry magic. Then why then could you not control that man dick and nuts and who he throw his dick to and his calm and then you couldn't even talk to the man and tell the man you better stop fucking this bitch and you better stop fucking that bitch and you better stop fucking Tanisha or it's going to be a problem. No. You got some of his friends. Hey, you 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 had some of his friends. Like y'all in high school. Huh? Go and try to talk to Nip and tell Nip the Crip with the super. Yeah. You had to tell the drip guy. You had to get another nigga like you is about 15 years old that go over there and tell your post to be nigga. To stop fucking another bitch. Cause he went with that shit you with. <laughs> but you is, you, your pussy is magic. Pussy magic. You special in your ass. And you know you was all dead. <laughs> but your Kit Kat didn't have that comeback and couldn't make the crib hold its calm for your wop and your drill. You ain't got that drill. You ain't got that vagina power drill. Call you sending messages to a crib. To the fly crib. And tell him to keep his dick out of Tunisia and other bitches. The legend. I'm not going to even say allegedly. You know what? I'm a liar. I'm the witch down south that needs to be shot. I'm not saying allegedly on that either. You could control your nigga's dick. But didn't your teacher tell you to repeat after her? We are the women. We are the healers. You said, didn't you say, I think I seen a quote or something about a year ago. You said, you see souls, don't you? So use a seer too. Use a reader. And I'm going to ask you again. Why didn't you and your teacher? Tell that man not to go to that meeting at that marathon store when they shot that man down there that day. Because you was in California with your teacher doing spiritual lesson. That's not a legend because that's what you said you were there in California. Yay. Yippee yay yo yippee yay yay. You was in Kelly. But even if you wasn't, you was a star. You was powerful. You was the women's and the healers. So you heals men. 
You healed sticks, but the man was broken. Because he had broke up with you, he was fucking everybody. God damn it. The nigga told me he was fucking bitches on the floor. He was fucking them in and out the marathon high and low. They on the molly, sucking the dick, and at the party, and don't want to be toddy. Yes. He's fucking the bitches till they have incoherent speech. And they just making sound. And noises. Slobbing and foaming at the mouth. Clapping in and out they ass. After he got with you and was fucking you. He's over here. In and out bitches. Fucking them in the car. Fucking them in the truck. Fucking them in a the marathon. In the hotel putting them in the buck. But you were healing. This man. It shouldn't even got to that. Oh, oh, I know. It just come to me in the spirit. You healing him now by selling his clothes. And you got that deal with Jay-Z on the Puma in the marathon store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. You healing him. <laughs> you is healing him. That's what and that that's what you doing. Writing his picture and shit and writing his letter on your damn arm. Trying to get your come up after y'all done killed him like Lucky Charm. But see, you, 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 wearing that man's name and pitching shit drawed on your damn arm and wearing that man two big long ass shoe and long ass pants and one arm up and one arm down. Just trying to use that as a Lucky Charm to draw that man birthright in and take that man money. That's all you're doing because you wasn't doing that before he got shot. When he ain't fucking with you like that. Nigga was trying to find himself and become God and rise up in the membranes of different bitches' cervix and pussy. Because he didn't quite know who he was. He was trying to learn about spiritual sexuality. And penis power and sperm power. That's why he was starving. Somebody going to say to me, he didn't ask you for salmon. I know you didn't say that. I said yes. I know he didn't ask you for that. Yes. I know you didn't hear that. Yeah, I did. I heard it. That's not the diet he was on. Excuse me. He was a vegetarian. And he only ate vegetables. Oh. That's why he was looking emaciated and drawn up and weak like that. You can see every bone in his fucking body. You think that's cute? The boy was slim, but he didn't look like that. I even seen him when he was younger and he was real slim. He didn't look like that. He looked troubled and sick and worried and had witchcraft on him. They put death on that boy. To run that catastrophe to that boy. He might have been doing the temporary cleanse. But he wasn't going to be able to live the rest of his life like that. You could tell his metabolism was so high. With just them greens it was burning up all the fat in his body. And it's not healthy to have no fat on your body. You could look at him. You could tell he was drawn. And you could see the trouble on his face. You could see the trouble in his eyes. Because it breaks my heart when I see him standing out there in that parking lot with that t-shirt on and that do-rag and the red fucking shorts on. With the red pant. With that tennis. You could see it in his eyes. It was right before they shot him. You could see it on him. And somebody that thin like that with no body fat is real easy to shoot and kill. 
Ain't got nothing. No meat or nothing. Just bone. A little bit of tissue. A little muscle. So you're trying to, you know, say the fuck off my page. If you know that that's not what he eat and I'm giving him the wrong diet to feed him on the higher level in the astral body and you're saying this is what I want to do. He doesn't ask for this. Do your own videos. And you, why don't, you know what, that's what I noticed. All of y'all try to tell me what to feed him and what not to feed him. You're not sending me no money and you're not doing videos preparing meals for him and setting an altar for him. But you want to tell me what the fuck to do and what he had and what he didn't fucking have and what he like and what he don't fucking like. And um, all this goddamn who shot John shit. I don't give a fuck about it. You're not going to tell me what the fuck to do. Bitch, I cook him what the fuck he asked me for. And what you don't know, that I know, that he's not under that contract no more. And it seems to me, if somebody can prove it to me, if I'm right or wrong, let me know. It seemed like this man asked me for stuff that he had as a child. And that he had growing up. Round his grandmama and shit. Seem like he like a southern old school cuisine. Like at some point in his life, probably as a child and growing up, he used to have these type of comfort food that I make for him. That's what I think. Because that's soothing and nurturing to him. And it reminds him when he was loved. So it make, make me wonder, did his grandmother cook like that when he was a little boy? And when he was growing up, and even when he became a grown man, maybe a young man, did the grandmother cook things like that? With that southern, uh, that stank on it. You see what I'm saying? That stank on it from the dirty south. I kind of get that vibe. Because a lot of times, when he'll tell me to cook for him, when I see him, he looks like a teenager. He looks like the Nipsey with no hair on the face and a couple of braids. So when he asks me for something, and I'll wait. He asks me today, I'm like, okay, well, I'll see what you say tomorrow. If he keeps asking me for the same thing, I guess what I give him. Because I know you don't know him like I do. He's in a different... Anyway... When I, uh, and this goes for a lot of people when they physically die. And the real them steps out of that body and that, that illusion. He was searching for himself. He started to fast. And he started to evolve. And many times when people try to evolve, and I've seen other men do this, they'll fast. And they start to starve and they start to do a lot of prayer. Or they go into just metaphysical stuff. Uh, well, uh, just veggies, vegetables and a lot of chanting and praying. They lose weight and they start burning a lot of fat and negative energy. And they break up with women and different people that no longer serve them, that hurt them. And I've seen this happen to a guy. We used to be together every day. We would go chant. He said, I have to go chant. Uh, I'm trying to purify. And he was a vegetarian. He wouldn't eat no meat. And every day for hours just chanting. And I brought him to my house. He said, I'm going to teach you how to chant. Because I don't know. They're Indian chants and I didn't know them. It can be hard to learn. Within a few months of him chanting, he was with his girlfriend. And they were fucking. And his energy was so high and so pure. That's why it just stunned me. They were fucking and he had a massive heart attack and died. No meat. No drugs. No Alcohol. This man had been fasting and had been shedding weight, shedding energy, uh, negative energy, ascending. When you touch him, it's like you actually feel like uh, electricity. And I would be with him. And and I say, okay, I'm, I'm going to go. And it would be, we'd just be in there. Just chanting. Hours. Hours just chanting. Day. And the lunch and the dinner. And then he saw her and she called me crying. I said, what's wrong? She said, 
Vincent just died. We were making love. He had a massive heart attack. And when the ambulance got there, she said he started foaming at the mouth. It was too late. I've seen this before. And I went to his funeral, and he looked at peace. I couldn't understand. He looked at peace. He was in his 50s, still relatively young, and had muscle everywhere. This guy looked like a bodybuilder. He was vegetarian. Good looking guy. Had a bald head. He didn't look his age. Beautiful body. Younger women were always hit on you. Sleep with younger women. Phil did. In the middle of sex. And uh, when I spoke to him in spirit, he didn't ask me for vegetarian food. Because there are, there are different agreements that they go through that you don't know about. And I get to hear it, and you don't. So I'm not saying that that didn't happen. I'm not saying that someone didn't put him on that diet, and he agreed to that diet for that particular period of time. I'm not saying that didn't happen. All I'm saying is that when he's with me, that's not the agreement. So if he tells me, I want this particular dish, and I want a piece of meat, or I want a piece of fish. That's what he's going to get here. Because he has explained to me the differences. So I don't argue with people that are still in a physical body dealing with your finite, mundane ass mind. Who think you know everything about him. When he was that. But he's not that no more. That is still him, but that is one side of him when he was in that contract. And he knew that at 33, and it broke his heart because he didn't want to end his life. But he knew he had to prepare to ascend because they were going to take his life because he would not submit. And they had basically already deceived him and tricked him and took things from, you know, who it makes me think about Shaka Zulu. And you know, them black people gave the okay to kill Shaka Zulu. Once they got under British rule and they came in and tricked them and tricked him. So, you know, there are a lot of things, like I said, I'm going to write them in the book that he has taught me. I'm not going to explain all these things, but I'm not going to argue. I said what I said. And if I believe he's telling me to prepare him something, I'm going to do it. And if you don't like it, just stay off my page. Create your own page and you cook for him. You fix his altars for him. You let him give you his vegetarian only menu. And you stick with dad. Stay the fuck out of my business. Because I'm going to do what I want. And I'm going to do what I believe the spirits tell me to do for them. I don't live for y'all. Why would I listen to you? You don't even understand me. You laugh at me and make fun of me. You think, oh, the fuck, I'm going to listen to what you say to me. Well, sure, needs they know everything. So let's see if he eat over there and get them. That he gives me a menu every week. Let them listen to him. So they know every fucking thing. Buck your damn eyes and see his ass over there. And open your fucking ears and listen to him. Get your pencil and paper, bitch. And write the shit down. He fucking tell you to get your stinking ass up and cook, bitch. Don't. If you're not doing it, don't try to tell me what to do. Especially when you don't give me no money. Because uh, that doesn't work over here. Get your ass up at all times of night and listen and write. Because I be tired. Not tired, tired. T I E D. And nigga, keep me always getting a bitch something to do, goddammit. So let me go on vacation, goddammit. You take over. <laughs> you know so fucking much.
you make his sages and all that. And you light them up and put you on a dress, nigga, and sing. God damn it. Because it was a man that said it. Get you a dress, put your titties out, and put you an end necklace on and sing. Huh? And leave me alone. Then we'll watch you. I was going to say, yeah, I didn't get into the rest of that because it's late. I'm not finished. That's just the basics of it. Something else was I want to add one more thing before I go. Oh, this is so bad. And I hope all this stuff is revealed. What? I, yes, let me keep these just like I found them because I'm going to go into this. And I know this is about money. Setting him up and stealing from him for money, with the, for money and opportunities. And he feels so betrayed. He feels like all these people around him that he thought was his friend and he was loyal to them and they friend. They betrayed him. Trade him, talk about him, and then get right back up in his goddamn face. What did he say? Uh, I guess I can't think of it right now. I'm looking at this couple of papers. Uh, I get into the rest of when I get back. I just wanted to uh, kind of give an overview. Yes, he did. I'll say the one more thing. His mother. We already know Black Sam needs to be careful. This mother needs to be careful because the mother, as I have said before, is very psychic. The mother's special. His birth mother. But his, her, his mother was not very close to her children. And if she talks about it all the time, his mother did not love him. I hate to say that, but he said his mother did not love him. And he still holds grudges against his mother. But he still loves his mother. And he wishes his mother would fix it and love him. The mother's conflicted within herself. And the mother has to deal with her pain and her past and her guilt and her pride. But he also told me that the mother is under... The, how do I say this? She might not know. Somebody's watching the mother and approach the mother that is an eastern star and under the boule, under the black boule rule and they control a portion of the mother. They have like put themselves inside of the mother's spirit and he also said, Lauren is a reflection of his mother. And Lauren knew that. So Nipsey might have told her, or she might have been around and seen, that Nipsey didn't always get along with his mother. They clashed. They had a lot of rifts. And like they started trying to get close when he was getting ready to be murdered. Um. But they still didn't always understand each other and see eye to eye. And he had a lot of pain. He said his mother broke his heart. And he's still not completely healed. And he wants the mother to help heal him and balance him. And um, it looks like they did some type of ritual, Puma, with an Easter star woman. Older woman, her teacher, that's also an Eastern star, a female Mason, and now she is a female Mason. She has taken the oath, and they tried to superimpose the seductive energy and the beauty, but also the contradictory nature of the mother onto Puma and play the mind games with him and seduce him. And lure him in and then trick and confuse him with the mother's energy. It looks like the mother 
has so much energy, so many spirits on her, that they could take pieces of the mother's energy and her soul and wear it and she not know. She probably knows now and Nipsey knows now how they tricked him and used illusion. He just whispered to me. He said, tell her I see her in the cosmic divine mirror. She mirrored my mother and she appeared to be a reflection of my mother's face. So clearly Nipsey picked people that had things about them that reminded him of his mother. A certain look, a certain energy, like the ones he would get serious about or talk to or hang around. It was always something about them that was like his mother. But he see, he says now he sees them in the cosmic divine mirror. The two sides of the mirror. And so above, below. He says, she never loved me. She used me. She tricked me and deceived me. She set me up. So they could get the marathon. And they could get everything I own because she thought I was naive. She thought I was dumb. She thought I was weak for pussy. Her pussy. That I would sell myself out to be with her, but I didn't. He said she used magic and deception with her female Mason teacher. He said, and those connections will fall. What she has done will not last. I should have to deal with this man and that man and fuck this one and fuck that one to keep the lie going. But she has a certain time limit on the lie, certain pocket of time, because he said the energy will collapse upon itself because she deceived me. And she used the pain that I had from my mother and trying to pull the energy of my mother. She said, a mother's eyes and the mother's heart and her energy. She, he said, Lauren has deceptive eyes. They appear to be one way. But she is a man eater and a killer of souls. A vampire. They're taught to fuck a man and save certain chance when they have sex with a man to act like they're giving him energy, but really they're stealing his soul out of him. They're sucking it out. And they like to use drugs. To do it. And then put the demons on the man. Put them in him while they pulling the soul out of him. And I just. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know. What the song. I don't know you. I don't. Oh I have not tied you in my pussy. Oh is that her friend? I don't know you, I don't know you, I don't know you anymore. Oh, we, I did not touch you, so is he. Is that her friend? They do that shit together. I don't love you. Uh -uh. Yeah. Yeah. They both had the same teachers. <laughs> ah, that Jenny, that's what tonight. I don't love you. Uh. They pull on men. They man eaters. They pull on that man 
and take his energy out of the lion. They stab the lion in the heart to pull the blood in the heart of the lion and use him. Oh, Lord, let me shut the fuck up and I get in trouble for saying that shit. Oh, boy. They do sex magic, but they buy nickels and take their soul and then get close to them and marry them or buy them and take their shit. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, but Cass, I didn't see Cassie close to Nip, though. She wasn't close to Nipsey. She didn't try to fool Nipsey. This is a clique of them. They're taught to do these things. You think these women just happen to do these things, and they only have a certain type of woman, and in a certain group, and they don't let... Anybody like me get close to them? Anybody like you, a regular, a, a person that's spiritual, really spiritual, and really for real, and really honest to pull their coat? Because they have the vampires and the beta sex kittens and the Illuminati MK Ultra sex slaves round to keep that money in them circles and set they ass up and circulate it back to them and instead of having someone open their mind up and pull them out of there. Yeah, but for her, him to say that right there, she must be close. She must be close to Nipsey uh, Puma. They do this shit in clicks. They team up on each other, nigga. So you think one woman doing that to a nigga by herself, she has help. It's a click of them. I just seen a serpent spirit on them. A serpent club, a kalima spirit. And a mermaid and a merman. See, yes, that's what I want to get speaking of that under the earth and in the water. There's another underground city in California. There's another set. Really, it's two sets of volcanoes down now. They've been down now, and some of them is blue. They look like some people down there that look like the blue people from the movie. Those people are real. <laughs> Yes, and the high priest, the medicine man, is down in Australia under the ground talking to me. We've been talking for the past few months now under the ground, and they've been connected from Africa, the desert, the Middle East, going all through there, Sudan, Somalia, Ethiopia, Israel. Coming back around to the United States and California doing the fault lines in Mexico and Nevada. And the skin walkers is up. The dead people. And they move through Route 666. Down under the ground, the fault lines are open and the, uh, well, they've opened them. The people down under the ground, there are two levels of volcanoes. There's one level under there, then there's another one. There are cities. There are cities along with the military bases in certain areas and where the fault lines are cooking. They've been cooking since last year. Nipsey has spoken to me about these fault lines and these volcanoes. Earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, famines, crazy weather changes since 2000. And the planes. Because they're rigging and trashing the system. On purpose. I will get back into that in a couple of days. Just want to mention those things. That's really weird that he would bring that lady into this here. 
and say that they friends and they have the magic squares. The magic in they pussy. Hypnotize them with they pussy. Oh Lord Jesus. I didn't want to say that. He just said it. Sean seemed mighty close to Nipsey. Seemed like I came up to Nipsey Murder Hall. Oh, really? Okay. I'm going to say this. When somebody physically dies as an entertainment, look at who comes up around them. Look at who does well and get their shit on the radio. And whose song go up. Just like Roddy Rich. Rex in the middle was down here yesterday or the day before and did a video shoot and got it shot up. Hmm. And then the... Oh, Jesus. The young man, Honeycomb. Brazy. Grandparents got shot. In the house. Said so they were on oxygen tank dealing with COVID. And then the house, they said, set it on fire. But he said it wasn't set on fire. The oxygen tank exploded. And he just got a music deal about three months ago. Just like when Megan got her music deal, her mama and grandmama died. Just like when Jennifer Hudson got her deal, her mama and the little boy and shit got killed in the house. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of different people. When they get these deals, folks come up dead. After they deal. Maybe it's just coincidence because they said Honeycomb Brazy had problems with the gangs, had been off and on, be going on. Hmm. You know, I'm trying to stay out of that. Because I talked to a couple of the demons that's holding their grandmother and their grandfather a couple of days ago. Uh, that's quite interesting. I didn't sit with them yet. But I saw them. They let me see them. They was holding them by the back of the neck. They were sent to get them. I've been too busy to get into it. Because I've been working on this with Nipsey. Plus... I don't like to say things because, you know, people always get mad at me. One thing I can tell you, I've never seen them before. These two demons are twins. That's a married couple, male and female. Both of them have tanks. Both of them are sick. So there will be a set. But yet they said twins. Twin demons. At least that's how they introduced themselves to me. They had the address. <laughs> yeah. I'm like the little, the song on the shepherd, little shepherd boy, do you see what I see? Do you hear what I hear? Do you know what I know? I don't want, I, I'm not going to say nothing else about it. Because I still cannot believe that they did that shit. Oh, that's some evil cold shit. And the way he grins, the way he grins, I done seen that. The way Hudden Cone Brazy grin, I seen that before. 
he was calm. Just like Lil Dirt was calm on IG when they shot Vaughn. Some cold shit to shoot some old people. Burn them up. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm tired. I'll see what else he has to say to clarify. And I'm gonna look at this again. Again, what I said about Kobe Supreme. And the baby mama is a spiritual reading for entertainment purposes only as a lid. But I'm going to check it again. And if y'all didn't know him, know I got that wrong and that he's fucking these bitches in the store. Got the bitches in there making all kind of nondescript ass noises and animal sounds like they over there at the motherfucking he haul. Then, hey. Tell me the nigga didn't do it. If I heard Nip wrong, saying they in there sucking dick like knick knack, patty whack, gill dog, a bone, and in there bad, bad black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. I'm saying, yeah, the bitches in there, in there sheep like, <laughs> look. I'm willing to be wrong. <laughs> niggas say he had them bent over. Said them niggas bitches was running laps. Then <laughs> got them bitches running track, running on dick, on the molly, getting hits and sucking dick. Look, if I'm misinterpreting and the man didn't have no bitches up in now. <clears throat> like that, I will apologize for the shit that I said. God damn it. Because I could have misinterpreted that man's message. I mean, I, didn't, I did not know people drive up to people's store, to a public store, and a mall, and pull their drawers down and clap their ass cheek. I didn't know that. I mean, but I could have heard the man wrong. Just that they, the marathon dick. He said they would drive up and wait on the marathon dick. And then go in there and holler. Hi. Said people know what was going on. He said they know that that's what they come there for. He wasn't raping nobody. He wasn't fucking no children. They was all grown people. And they come and wait for that man. And, and get that shit. You know, they know that the nigga had things that, you know, he could supply. You know, they go ask daddy <laughs> for favors and protection and have me do favors. Can you do this and dad and can I have some clothes? And he was a nice guy. I mean, they fucked him because they wanted to, but he would give them stuff. And give them money and look out for them. These were consensual things. He didn't bribe nobody. Okay, well, you say you hungry and you need your bill paid. You know what you got. He didn't make nobody do that. They wanted to do that. But it went too far because then they started want to talk about him. And go talk about him to Dr. Pepper. You know, went and talked to him to, to Pepper about him and... And it was really because, not because he did nothing wrong, because he's young, he fucking the women, and they liked him and wanted somebody to make him do what they wanted him to do or be with them and shit. Well, I'm praying to know what you're going to do. What, 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 what are you going to say? Now, what, what? You know what I'm saying? The same thing, but bitch, I said before I know you're pregnant, bitch, because that ain't what I want to do, and you know that wasn't what it was. I like shit like that. That's what he's saying. Really not no serious shit. Like, oh, he told me he loved me. Oh, he beat me up. Oh, now. They, they, they wanted him to beat that pussy up. 
And then when the shit didn't go the way they wanted it to, uh, it was like, well, you know, you know, he was real cool to play about the shit. Well, you know, we had an understanding. We do what we do. We chill. We get high. You ain't got to fuck me if you don't want to. You know, we can just sit here and chill, drink, talk, whatever. I mean, but if I want to do that and you want to do that and we do that, then we do that. But if you don't, it's still cool. You still, I, I need, you need my help, I'll still help you. But I'm not going to make you do nothing you don't want to do. It is what it is. I mean, but I'm going to fuck somebody else, though. So, I mean, don't get mad. But I'm, I'm not going to get mad because you don't want to do it. But if I, I, if I got needs, I, I, hey, we still good. That's how he was. And women did not like that. They could not accept it. But these are women he wasn't even committed to. He didn't even really know. But you're going to try to impose that on this man. And then get an attitude and want things to happen to him because he don't. This ain't what you thought it was going to be. Y'all don't even know each other. I mean, he was young, you know. And some of these women were older than him. They they weren't his age. Some of them might have been a little younger, but some of these women were his age. Some of these women were older than him. That's what I'm seeing. They just didn't look old. And they were trying to put pressure on him, even though they were older than him. They should have been more mature. But instead, they're trying to control. And that's what he was telling me. He's like, crazy stuff went on there. And I understand why they liked him. But what he doesn't understand is, y'all used me worse than what you said I used you. Because, I mean, you knew what it was. And now, y'all won't help me. Y'all won't say nothing. That That's why he said that he wanted me uh, to bring it up. He said, there a lot of them have guilt because they won't stand up. He said, but a lot of them are afraid. And they have guilt because they're afraid. Very cowardly about it. And I was just like, oh, I know how you feel. Because he was all the way down for them. He was all the way down for all these people. I don't know my cash out by heart. But I know it's on my page. But anyway, I'm going to go because it's late. I'm like, where is this? must be from my candle because it's this whole time I've been seeing this streak. Come across here, but the candle's sort of that way and not this way. I, I don't have time to burn the sage. I have to do it the next show because it's after three anyway. And I'm exhausted. I, I really need to get more rest. But I did just want to take and take do that little bit, and then I'm gonna go back over it and come back and clarify. And if I made any mistakes, I'm going to take them back. I'm going to change what I've said. So, okay, y'all, thank you for loving me and supporting me, and you know, being here for the readings and the donations. Because to be honest with you, I'm not gonna do this long. I. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a lot of shipping and stuff because I don't feel comfortable being here knowing that people have my address and are still secretly trying to plot on hurting me. So, if people cannot help me and donate so that I can leave here, then I'll just stop doing the lies and I'll find something else to do and leave. I'm not going to keep on being up here doing these readings, putting myself at risk. And I'm still hearing that this is what she's trying to do. I don't see this a definite at this point. I don't see anybody's taking it up. But she keeps trying to talk to get people to do this to me. I don't feel safe here. So, as an adult, I'm going to do what's the best thing for me to be safe. And I'm, I'm moving. So I'm not going to keep sitting here putting out this information. It's already very, very inflammatory. And if... If people don't support me so I can get what I need to move, then I'm just going to cut this off and I'll find another group of people to support me. And I just won't give them my information no more. So that's a, that's a, I can't make you do it, but I'm, you can't make me continue to do this. And this is where I am with this. And I've been thinking about it and thinking about it. And I just really haven't gotten a lot of overwhelming support. I haven't gotten a lot of donations behind this or support so that I can make a change in my life. So if you don't help me make it, I'm going to make it on my own. And I just won't come here and keep giving my heart, my soul, my time, and my energy and something happens to me 
and I'm on my own. Because y'all will sit here and tap your fucking hands and shit and get all this free information. But then when I need something, y'all not sending me nothing. Just like the bitch going to send something and then say, oh, I didn't mean to send you that. I want it back. People like that, get stay the fuck away from me. I'm, I'm dead as, as, as a point now. I have to think about my security and my safety. And that's what the fuck I'm on. And that's where the fuck I'm at at this point. So this is probably going to be like the last week. Maybe at the pushing it the most and make this very clear when I do the next show. Maybe next week. And then after that, I'm I'm going to go to another platform where I can get my money to look out for me. And I'm not going to keep on looking out for y'all and entertaining y'all and giving y'all what the fuck you want to hear for free. While you in the comfort and safety of your motherfucking house and ain't nobody got your goddamn address. Fucking with you. About what the fuck you say and what the fuck you do. So, uh, yeah, that's what it is. That's what the fuck it is. I don't really care about how what nobody think or nobody fucking feel about it. Because if, it, if anybody really gave a fuck about me and was concerned about me, I would have already had what the fuck I needed to move. And right now I don't. So, I'm going to do what I got to do. And I'm going to make the changes. That's all I've been thinking about. Make the changes I need to fucking make. And if I got to cut this off, then that's what the fuck it is. Because if ain't nobody really rhyme with me and you listening, you don't really give a fuck about what happens to me any fucking way. And I've and I accepted that. That's how I fucking see it. I'm not going to listen to nobody and somebody going to tell me their address is out there and they got screenshots to prove that their fucking address is out there and tagged it. A bitch, a bitch is tagged in the shit that... This motherfucker exposing for setting a nigga up. I see that shit. And the person's telling me, look, I'm exposed. And my life is in danger. And I keep watching them. But I won't even offer them no kind of assistance. Or say, I know this person can do it or that person can do it. What can I do for you? What you need? But I'm still fucking watching them. Say shit to keep putting themselves at risk. And they are sitting fucking duck. If I watch somebody go through that. And I know they've been put out there bad like that. I don't really give a fuck about them. Just like the ones you watch don't really give a fuck about me. So, I'm cool with that. And I accept that. And I'm finna get the fuck on. Because y'all, y'all not finna hear about me. And you not finna drive down or fly down Atlanta and see me in no fucking funeral home and do no fucking refads on me. No. I'm good. The more I think about this shit, I'm finna wrap this the fuck up. Nipsey understands that. Talked about that. And whatever reason I do for him, I will not be putting him in public. I put him private where I get my money so I can fucking leave. I'm not going to continue to do this for people that really don't give a fuck about me. Just because you sit here and you fucking laugh and shit and click a thumb up in a heart, don't mean you give a fuck about me. What, what means you really give a fuck about me is you help me get, some, get a, a better place to go. And I say place to go, people don't know where the fuck I live. So, all that shit, I don't want to hear that shit. I don't, I don't, I don't want to no emoji. Fuck that. Stick that in your ass. Because you know that shit happened to me. I have the proof the shit was done to me. And I'm not going to keep on fuck. I'm not putting this shit out no more. I said the fuck I said. The people on Facebook saw the shit. I sent it to people in their inbox. Um, the lady did a video for me on YouTube. Saw the shit. I'm done. You done. You ain't gonna fucking give me nothing. You ain't gonna help me. I ain't getting your motherfucking ass nothing. No fucking mode to put me in a position to get killed. Saying this goddamn shit that is true and it is dangerous to fucking say. For your entertainment and your fucking laughs. For nothing. I, I, I basically, I've had that. You better enjoy these. Cause I'm finna wrap this shit up. I'm not finna be crucified and die for no motherfucker that sit there in the comfort of your motherfucking home and listen to me put myself, put my fucking head on the chopping block while y'all watch that shit. And that's all you fucking do is watch that shit. Or if you don't do nothing for me because they don't have no fucking dollar attached to the shit. Yep, I see it. What the fuck? I just see it. I make no apologies about it because it's clear you don't give a fuck. So since you don't give a fuck, I don't fucking give a fuck. 
And I'm not finna sit here and die for you motherfuckers. That sit there and get entertained. And then don't fucking come to my motherfucking aid.